Hi guys and welcome to this little comparison video. Um, this is not going to be a comparison in the terms of uh, this is this one better than this. It's just a direct comparison to show you the differences, hopefully, and make clear the differences between a cam lever chronograph like this Lander on 48 and a column wheel chronograph like this just arrived uh, Valju 22. Now these are both vintage Swiss chronographs. Now, if you've read any watch articles about chronographs, you will have no doubt read numerous times um, things like such and such a movement, such and such a watch uses such and such a movement, which is a column wheel chronograph, which is better because it requires more precision to make, etc., etc. But quite often these articles say things like this and don't really give any explanation as to what they mean, as to what that is. And hopefully by showing the differences between the two, it will give you a bit more idea. Now, it's easy to read an article like that and think, oh, that must mean that uh, column wheel chronographs are great and cantilever chronographs are rubbish in comparison. And that's really not the case at all. It's a matter of practicality and, and balancing things. Hopefully when you see the operation, you'll get a better understanding of why they're considered to be more precise and why they are considered to be better because of that. So over here, we've got this lander on. And when you operate the chronograph, you press the start button and you'll see that it has a long lever which fits into this notch on the hammer. As you press that button, it throws the hammer open to its widest position. You'll notice the default stop position or default reset position rather, the hammers are fully closed onto the hearts, whereas the default position on the Valju, the hammers are away from the hearts, but down just under the hammer, which you can probably just see here, is a brake which rests on the chronograph runner and holds it in position. So you'll see that in a little bit more detail when it's operated. And with the cam lever, you press this, and the button is only actuating the hammer. Everything else then happens from the hammer. It's got a little eccentric adjusting screw, which slides up on this on the heel of this here, which is your coupling clutch. That allows the coupling clutch to mesh with the chronograph runner and allows the chronograph runner to drive. Every minute, a finger on the chronograph runner turns this intermediate wheel, which turns the minute recording wheel one click like so and this is retained click per click on a 30 minute cycle by this little spring here which falls passes the teeth and falls into each notch and holds it in place when you press the stop button which happens to be the lower one on this but that's not always the case it's not that's not unique to um to cam lever chronographs, that's, that's just unique to this particular movement. But when you press the stop button, it brings the hammer up to the halfway position and disengages by means of this eccentric on the coupling clutch, it disengages the coupling clutch. It lifts it away from the chronograph runner, stopping that exactly where it is. At this point, however, the only things Stopping that moving are the fact that it's meshing with the minute recording wheel. Nothing's actually stopping that moving uh, like the, the, the brake on this one. This will sit like this until you reset it. And then when you reset it, that throws the hammers back up to full, uh, full reset. That strikes the hearts of the chronograph runner and the minute recording wheel. And this intermediate um, unit underneath, this intermediate uh, driving wheel between the chronograph runner and the minute wheel also pivots and has an eccentric adjusting screw. So that moves accordingly to allow the resetting of both wheels without upsetting the uh, order and balance of things. If we now move on to the column wheel, you'll see why these are considered more complex. And it's because everything is operated via this column wheel. It's a castellated nut effectively, or a castellated wheel, which has turrets and troughs in it. And each press of the pusher pulls this wheel round one notch at a time, like so. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that there's a distinct difference 
in the feel of these pushers. Now that's not something that's going to come across easily on video, but a column wheel chronograph has a much more tactile feel. Whereas they're both very mechanical in their field. There's a definite click when you operate them. And I'm going to hold the microphone up to them and see if you can hear the difference. Hopefully you can. So here's the lander on. So that's the start, stop and reset of the lander on. And on the same thing with the Valju, if you listen to this one, try and get them. Now hopefully you could hear the difference there. There's a, um, it's, it's hard to describe, but there's a, a definite difference in sound and a very, very definite difference in feel. Now, not so much so that you press this and go, oh, that's horrible. Because that's not the case at all. You just know that it's a mechanical feel rather than like a quartz chronograph where you just beep, press a button and away it goes. Uh, it's much more, they're both tactile in terms, in, in that uh, sense. But with this one, this one feels more agricultural, I guess you would say. I don't, don't mean that in any demeaning or derogatory way. It's just, it just feels a bit more rough and a bit more like it needs more effort to actuate it. Whereas the column wheel is just slicker and smoother when you press it. So looking at the operation, down here you can see we have got, just like the other one, we've got a coupling clutch. We've got the hammers here. We've got additionally a brake which sits on your chronograph runner. And likewise, you've got your intermediate wheel, your minute recording wheel, and the minute recording jumper spring, exactly like the lander on that we've just looked at. And it's driven in exactly the same manner as well, with a, an extended drive wheel, a uh, drive wheel rather, on the extended fourth wheel pivot from the small seconds hand. But when you press the start button, everything happens from here. So you press this, it opens to a slot for the chronograph runner, uh, sorry, for the uh, coupling clutch. So that then drops from one of the walls into the slot and couples with the chronograph runner and starts driving the chronograph runner. It blocks the reset button by moving one of the walls to the dimple that falls in for the reset so that you cannot press the reset button. Uh, which means, of course, it's not a fly, it doesn't have a flyback function, but you can't press the reset button accidentally, is, I imagine, the, the thinking behind this, without stopping the chronograph. This bit works exactly the same as the other one. It runs round, it has a little finger, that turns this wheel once every minute, which then turns the minute recording wheel and measures in one minute increments as it rotates around. The hammer sits here free of this and in addition to starting the driving of the chronograph wheel it also lifts away this lever here which leads to this which is a brake for your, uh, your chronograph runner. So this which touches your chronograph runner and stops it moving that lifts away and allows it to run. When you press the stop fu uh, function that will just stop everything. It will drop the brake back onto here. It will disengage the coupling clutch and it will leave your hammer in a position where it's able to drop into the opening that you can see there now and reset the two wheels. As things stand, the brake is actuating on the chronograph runner so it cannot move even if it gets shaken or something similar, that won't move. So that's a definite kind of handy feature, although typically a chronograph in use will not get shaken about or what have you. When you press the reset button, two things happen simultaneously. One of them is that the brake will disengage and the other is that the hammers will move up and strike the hearts. And then once you release the button, they will drop back away 
and the brake will re-engage keeping that so it will reset it to zero and keep it set at zero like so. Now you can see there there's actually a little bit of a delay of that that should spring back instantaneously but as I say this one's in to be looked at and uh, for some work and it's and it's sometimes a little bit sticky and has a little bit of a delay returning although it seems to be springing quite well just now. So that's essentially the difference between them. The operation of them is exactly the same. They both do exactly the same thing. They both have a chronograph bridge, like so, which holds a chronograph runner and a minute recording wheel. They both have an extended pivot with a driving wheel and a coupling clutch on the extended fourth wheel pivot. And that coupling clutch engages and disengages with the chronograph runner to make it work. But the difference is, on this one, everything's operated from the hammer and the, the start stop button only actuates the hammer, moving them away or towards the heart. Whereas on this one, the coupling clutch, the hammers, the driving function, the coupling function for the mini wheel, everything occurs from this column wheel. And it all occurs by this little lever down here, which you can probably just see with my tweezers there. And if you watch that, you can actually see that move that's connected of course to this lever which is your start button and that will pull that nice and elegantly round one click at a time and in addition to that you have um, another I don't know if you can actually see it but you do have oh you can see it it's right there I, I, I was looking over here for some reason, but just down here, you can see this one, which actually stops the rotation. So while this one pulls it to bring it round to the next notch, that bottom one drops into the following notch and stops it. So it will only remove round perfectly one notch at a time. So it does require more components to make it work. And that's where the precision side of things come in. But it doesn't necessarily mean one is specifically better than the other. That's just the difference between them. So the purpose of this video, as I say, is it's not to say one's better than the other because, because I don't believe that's the case at all. People have the preferences, but that's essentially the difference between a cam lever chronograph and a, um, and a, a column wheel chronograph. Just as an additional little thing, I have if I can just quickly pop it out of my bits and pieces storage. Here I've got a Valju 7750 and although the oscillating weight is a little bit in the way because this of course is an automatic winding chronograph as well. The principle is exactly the same. This, this is probably just more complex because it's got more layers and more parts because as I say it's designed to be modular. You've got the minute recording wheel down here, the chronograph runner in the centre which you can't see because it's under the bridge anyway and you've got the oscillating weight in the way. But this is the cam lever system and when you press you start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. You can see how that rocks back and forth. Exactly the same idea as the long lever that engages in the hammers, but you've, this is a separate component. These are your hammers, this bit here, um, this bit coming up here, and then your hammers which actually move slightly back and forth. Uh, because one, one problem with older chronographs is the faces of the hammers wearing unevenly and sometimes it will reset the minute but not the uh, the seconds but not the minute and vice versa and to do correct that you've got to stone the faces of the hammers. You press your start like so, stop, start, stop. When it's in the stop position, sorry, when it's, when it's in the start position it won't do anything as you can see I wasn't pressing the other one firmly enough. When it's in the stop position like so that will reset everything and what that does is if you watch the it will move this cam for one thing and if you watch the hammers if I can try and get this I should have got a holder out um, for this but uh, I didn't actually think of adding this one until just now so so if you watch the hammers in addition to the cam when you press the reset button like so 
you can see the can moves round and the hammers will drop back down onto the hearts resetting them and those of you who know will know that the Valju 7750 are deemed to be very very good movements and they are indeed so hopefully that's been an interesting little um, little bit of information for you and it's uh, as I say it's not intended as, as any kind of in-depth um, guide or or um, a pointer as to which are good and which are bad because they're all equally good I believe I mean a chronograph is uh, as far as I'm concerned, chronographs are good anyway because they're, they're just fascinating things. I love chronographs personally. And as I say, I, I do not feel that one is, is better or worse than another at all. And uh, some people may have their preferences and prefer one over the other. But other than the actual physical feel the tactile feel of it, there really is no difference with regards to operation and the way that they work. So I hope that's been useful. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.